previous Tomb interview, we had an online test to do. You had to make a certain amount of marks to go on to your interview. You had to pass this test and then go on to your interview. The test itself was mathematical questions and some of it was healthcare based. Most of them were drug calculations. You were given a scenario and you had to work out the drug calculations and what you would be given. And there was a space for your answer in the box. I passed that assessment and then the next process was going in for my interview. And in my way to prepare for it, we were given an article to read. I read the article once and then the second time I read it, I took notes on the article on what they were telling me because I understood that the article, we were going to be asked questions about it when we went into the uni. Um, preparing for the interview, take a bottle of water with you. Because I think as my nerves were building, I could feel my throat drying up. When we got there, there was groups of 10, but there was about 40 students waiting. So when I walked in, the, everybody was nervous. But being so many, I think that you start to get a little bit frightened and thinking, they are not going to notice me because all of these people we get put into groups of 10 and there was two people from my class and we were told don't sit next to your friend so we separated I went into one group and my friend went into the other and we sat down in groups of 10 what made me feel better is the two interviewers sat down as well so they didn't stand over you they sat down too one asked the questions and the one next to him had like an ipad and what, what he was doing was putting in little numbers on how you've done when you answered the questions. Um, yeah, my, my experience was quite similar to Emily's. So um, I interviewed for four different universities and the process was so different among them. Um, the first thing that I received was some documentation. So each, each university generally sends out some documentation that kind of explains the interview process. Um, so for one university, there was uh, the kind of entrance exam where you had to do drug calculations under time pressure. Um, and then you were asked to read an academic journal, uh, make notes about it and kind of you'd be asked, you'd have to discuss that at the group interview, which was in person with 10 other people. Um, some of the universities did just smaller group interviews online. Um, so the the one for Cali was just four people online um, and they were quite good at explaining what kind of questions they were going to ask um, so you could go ahead and kind of read up about uh, the things that they were going to ask ahead of time and, and get really prepared. Um, I know that one of the universities this year I think it was Sterling they asked people to film a video of themselves explaining yes. what would be a good fit. Um, and I know that it changes every year. Um, so you just have to be prepared, I think, to understand what the university is looking for with the different methods that they're interviewing um, and, and show up prepared. Very good. One of the things about the group interviews, I think that's really important is they're looking to see your people skills and how you interact with people. Um, so it's important to give other people space to, to answer. They want to see that you're not kind of being too boisterous and talking over people and, and dominating the conversation, but also that you can kind of express yourself and, and put your point across. So it's a really good idea to interact with other people. And you know, if someone makes a point that stirs something in you, lead on from it and say, oh, you know, Emily made a really good point there, which makes me think of X, Y, and Z. Um, to keep it kind of flowing like a conversation. The, inter the interview process, they were very clear that they didn't want you to jump in and try and explain everything you know about the course and everything you know about being a paramedic. They want you to see that you can express yourself in a, in a different angle, maybe to other people. They want to see you as a person and mm -hmm. how you interact with a group. You could feel the nerves of other people people I was nervous myself and in one of my answers I managed to relate it back to my own experience I was a nursing assistant and I was able to incorporate that in one of my answers so they want to know a little bit about you where you've worked and what why you're there almost like why are you here what so it was actually really good that way as well and I took in a paramedic jarcal book 
every paramedic I have ever worked alongside had one of these paramedic books. Um, I have the exact same one. I took this into my interview. As a nursing assistant, I used that book because the medications are in the back of it. I felt on the day of the interview really, really nervous. Um, but I tried not to let it show. And what really helped as well was for the for the interview that was in person, just showing up a bit early and meeting some of the other applicants and getting to know them beforehand. So we had a little bit of a rapport. Um, and it was quite nice because I think everyone was in the same boat. Everyone was quite nervous and they they expect you to be nervous. So don't let it kind of get in the way and, and make you doubt yourself. Um, but just make sure that you're well prepared um, and that you, you know the answers to the questions that you're going to be asked and you'll be absolutely fine. I, I think we were asked a couple of kind of situational questions where they would ask, you know, can you show a time, can you tell us about a time that you've shown compassion, um, which, you know, that you can then relate to your professional or your personal life. Um, it's a good idea to use the STAR technique if you've ever used that for job interviews. Um, so if you're ever asked to give an example of a time when you've done something, if you explain the situation first and then the task that you had to accomplish, the action that you took, and the result that that um, kind of it resulted in, then that's quite a good way to structure your answer, um, and that's that's how they want to hear it. Yes. One of our articles was explaining paramedic profession, and it related to the the HCPC or the HSPC HCPC, yeah. and I related that into my answer. Nice. I think the question that I did really well on was, why do you want to be a paramedic? Because I was sure that they were going to ask that. And it was <laughs> the first thing they asked. And I had that question so rehearsed in my head that it was, you know, it just flowed out without me even having to think about it. Am I allowed to hear the answer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that in my answer to that one, I really just wanted to show that I had a realistic understanding of the profession. Yeah. Um, so I said that I wanted to care for people in a wide variety of ways. Um, so I, I explained that I knew that paramedicine wasn't all blue lights and trauma and that yeah. there was a good degree of social care. Um, and I just liked the idea that although there is that aspect of it, you could also on the same day you know be helping someone that's fallen out of bed or maybe someone that's having a mental health crisis and just needs someone to talk to um so i just like to be able to help people in a varied way yeah. um so this is the the jr calc pocket book um it's not a requirement you don't have to have this when you're at the applicant stage but it does show that you're prepared um it's a book basically that contains all the clinical guidelines for paramedics to use. So it's got all of the drugs in it. It's got the drug calculations. Um, it's got kind of flow charts for different situations. Um, so it can help you get a good insight into um, how paramedics operate. I know Emily, you said you'd used it as well. Yes, um, every paramedic had one that I'd worked alongside. And when I got my own, when there was medications I didn't quite recognize, I went to the JARCAL to explain what it was for and how it was used. If I understood it was for diabetes and I knew my patient was diabetic and I'm getting that information from that little book. And I've seen paramedics in situations where they have referred to it. Don't be embarrassed to take it out and try and learn from it while you're on the job because that's what it's for. Every guideline is in there. And um, if you're still in the application stage, the, the current year's book can be quite pricey, but you can pick up older ones. This, I mean, this one has clearly seen the walls. Um, this is the 2017 one that I got on eBay for about a tenner. Um, yeah. the, the new ones can set you back a good bit and they don't change all that much. So if you're just kind of studying it in the preliminary phases, you can definitely pick up an older one on eBay. It's very important to be yourself. Let your personality shine through. We're looking for what you can bring to the paramedic service. They want to know your knowledge, they want to know your experience, and they want to know how friendly you are, how sociable that you are, and if you are comfortable in groups and talking to new people, because that's what paramedics will be doing every day. Can you asset yourself in a manner where you are explaining a medical emergency?
have you got an understanding of the medications and the situations that you're going to be handing over to a doctor? They want to see that you have those communication skills, the attributes and a personality, one that's quite friendly, easy to get on with, but one who can assert themselves professionally. Absolutely. And I would say as well, don't worry too much if you you know, if you haven't worked in healthcare before and you don't necessarily have relevant experience because they're more looking for a people fit. So they, they want to make sure that you've got the communication skills, that you've got the people skills, that you can put yourself across um, and also that you've got a real understanding of, of what paramedicine is, what the career is like day to day, that you've kind of, they want to see that you've done your research and that you've done your reading. Um, because there's quite a few people that go for limited spaces. So it's good to make sure that you're prepared so that you can stand out in an interview. And if you can drop any kind of facts about the profession, if you can show that you, you know it back to front, then that's going to really make you stand out. If you can, uh, you know, sh talk about the history of paramedicine and, and how in the past 20 years it's gone from being vocational um, so you would kind of start as a as a driver or a, uh, an ambulance care assistant and work your way up. Um, and now it's, you know, um, a, a degree subject that you have to go and study for three years for. Um, how regulation has changed the career as well. Um, so the College of Paramedics was formed in quite recent years. Um, and, and paramedicine is becoming more of a, a, a kind of profession it's becoming more professional um, so if you can show that you've got an understanding of the, the history of the career and also where it's going in the future um, that that will put you in good stead